Hi, and welcome to The Running Channel. I'm Andy, and today I'm gonna to be taking a first look at the brand new Coros Pace 2 GPS running watch. So stay tuned for our verdict on what it's all about. But in the meantime, if you're not a subscriber already, please do hit subscribe to support the channel in what we're trying to do, bringing you free videos every week, and tap the bell icon to be notified when we do. Let's crack on. Firstly, all of the opinions that you're about to hear are my own, and we're not paid by Coros in any way to say nice things about their products. So let's jump in and tell you why we're reviewing this particular watch. Well, it's brand new, it's just been launched, but more importantly, it's also been billed as the lightest GPS sports watch that you can buy at the time of launch. In fact, with the nylon band, the Coros Pace 2 weighs in at only 29 grams. Now I've got the silicon band version here, but that's also incredibly light. So that is definitely a selling point. As the name might suggest, Pace 2 is an update to the original Pace watch, and there are a few key changes. To make it lighter, this is smaller, so it's 42 millimeters instead of 46 millimeters in the original pace. And another key change that instead of four buttons, there's now only two, one of which is Chorus's scroll wheel, which allows you to navigate through the various menu. The Pace 2 is priced at $199.99 or £179.99 retail price. And that price point and the features aims it squarely at the Garmin 45, the Garmin 245, maybe even the Sunto 5 and the Polar Ignite as well. It has a 42 millimeter case containing a 1.2 inch screen. Yes, they give us the screen size in inches and the bezel size in millimeters, I'm sorry. And that has a pixel resolution of 240 pixels by 240 pixels. So that's almost identical to the Garmin 245. It has a 30 hour true GPS battery life that's quoted, which you can extend to 60 hours if you use the Ultramax GPS mode. And that puts it firmly in the Polar Vantage M territory in terms of that 30 hour battery life. And that's a more expensive watch, about $80 more. And that 30 hours is more than all of those other watches I mentioned in terms of competitors at this price point. Coros also quotes a 20 day regular use battery life. So that's using constant heart rate monitoring, monitoring your sleep, the backlight coming on and off, receiving notifications and so on. So essentially regular normal use. And again, that 20 day battery life in regular use is quite a bit longer than the five to seven days quoted for most of the models also at this price point. Before I take you through all of the different menu screens, what it's like in use, how it performs on a run and ultimately give you a verdict, one last feature to touch on is that for running on a track. So Coros say they have a one of a kind, first of its kind algorithm, which makes for more accurate data capture on the track. You simply put the lane in that you're running in and then the watch does the rest. So that's a really interesting feature, but now let's dive in and take a look at what the watch is actually like to use. Okay, so let's head out and put the Coros Pace 2 through its paces on a run. First impression, straight out the door, picked up the GPS signal and my heart rate really quickly. I've got going, I can barely feel it. It is incredibly light, so that's quite a nice feeling. Next thing to notice is that the display is really easy to read. The contrast is good. I can see all of the main fields really clearly. I'm not having any problems reading the display, so that's great. Two buttons to keep it nice and simple on your run. The bottom right one is a nice responsive lap button, which is great. It also serves as the back button when you're navigating menus. Then there's the Coros digital dial, which is the scroll wheel, which also has a button that you can depress at its center to start and stop runs and so on, and select menu items. That one takes a bit more getting used to, and I'm actually finding it a little bit fiddly whilst I'm out on a run. Locating it's easy enough, but then actually scrolling it, there seems to be a little bit of resistance. Perhaps it's getting slightly stuck against my skin as a, a bony bit of my wrist that rests quite close to where that button is. So just taking a little bit of getting used to. Just finishing off now, and I guess the good thing to report is that I haven't really noticed the watch other than when I've been deliberately looking at it. It doesn't move around relative to my wrist because it's so light. It's a nice snug fit. Yeah, all good. Heading into the Coros app now, clicking on an activity brings up a pretty nice graphical interface with a map at the top. We're going to compare Coros and Garmin Connect side by side here. I was wearing a Garmin Phoenix 6 for comparison. It's one I've tested multiple watches against over the past few months. Starting at the top with distance, 9.10 miles on the Coros, 9.02 on the Garmin, a difference of 0.08 miles, which is not massive over this kind of distance, so nothing to be majorly concerned about there. Then onto cadence, the figures were pretty similar across the board. Elevation gain for the Garmin was 116 meters, and it's showing as 367 feet, which is 112 meters on the Coros, so pretty close. And then onto heart rate, one of the most important elements of this watch, and certainly one that's important to me. I wore a heart rate chest strap with my Garmin, which I know is accurate, I've used it for lab testing previously, and the results were really impressive. Both devices registered an average of 153 beats with 168 as the max on both, so showing good level of accuracy for a wrist-based device. 
You can also see the time spent in each heart rate zones and that affects your training effect, so the aerobic and anaerobic balance. And they're determined by the heart rate zones that you've set up within the watch or the app for each device. And actually I think mine are set up slightly differently here, which is why you see different scores. So I've had the chance to test the watch out a little bit, take it on a few runs, so now it's time for me to give you my opinions. Starting with the fact that the accuracy gave me no cause for concerns at all. And in particular, I was really impressed with the heart rate accuracy matching up with the heart rate strap that I'd used previously and I knew to be pretty accurate. So that's impressive for a wrist-based heart monitor to have that degree of accuracy and gives you that level of reassurance for your training. In terms of the main billing, as this watch being the world's lightest GPS running watch or sports watch in general, that's cool, but how much difference does it make in reality? Not much. I will say it is really light. I didn't notice it at all, which makes it brilliant to use, but is it that much lighter than a lot of the other watches on the market, like the Garmin 45, for example, which is only six or seven grams heavier? Then no, not really. But it is a cool thing to be able to talk about, and it is a really really light watch. From a little bit more testing and extended use, one thing I did want to talk about is the scroll wheel that's used to unlock the watch, if that's how you have it set up, also to navigate menus on the run. Now how I have my watch on my left wrist with the buttons on the right hand side, I actually found that the bony bit on my wrist interfered with the scroll wheel and actually scrolling it sometimes to, to unlock or whatever I was doing on a run was actually a little bit awkward and it would stick a little bit because it was pushed up against my skin as how I was wearing it. So that's not ideal and something to bear in mind, but I will say there is a lot more flexibility with this watch than some in that you can wear it on either wrist. You can set that up in the app when you set it up and you can also choose to wear the watch with the buttons on the right hand side or the left hand side. Now for me, I don't feel comfortable wearing my running watch on anything other than my left wrist and also I like to start and stop the buttons with my, my index finger, I guess, so having the buttons on that side is important to me, but it's worth bearing that in mind. One thing I really liked actually was part of the setup process and you can continue to customize it after the initial setup as well. And that's the training screens, the workout screens and how it's displayed in the app. It's really visual, really intuitive and I really enjoyed being able to see exactly what I was gonna end up seeing on my run and choosing the exact data fields that I wanted to display. I found that really good, really easy to use. Quick note on visibility, it's not the biggest watch but at 42 millimeters it's certainly not the smallest and I didn't have any problems with the display, with reading it out on a run or general everyday use. It also has enough space, enough screen real estate to see all of the important information and to clearly display things like notifications if that's important to you as well. Might be worth noting I did have a little issue with the backlight and without the backlight coming on from gestures and so on sometimes I found it difficult to read in certain situations but as soon as I'd sorted that out and put it on that it came on for wrist-based gestures then I found that it was very easy to read in, in all sorts of level of light. One of the things that potentially sets this watch apart at this price point is the 30 hour GPS battery life and the 20 day regular use battery life. I haven't had to charge this watch, I've used it for a few runs over the course of more than a week uh, and haven't seen a massive dent in the battery life so I have no reason to expect that those figures aren't at least close to being accurate. So if ultimately battery life is a big thing and it is for most of us, we don't want to spend our whole life charging our accessories when we should be wearing them, particularly if we're using them for sleep or regular life heart rate tracking then this could be a good option. In fact, it says that it fully charges in two hours as well as a maximum charge time. Now, whilst $199 or £179 is a significant investment for a lot of people, it's definitely not a top of the range, really high-end, really expensive GPS running watch. So there are particular features that you don't get at this price point, music being one of them. Similarly, you don't get any navigation. In fact, you'd be looking for something like the Sunso 5 for breadcrumb navigation, the Garmin 245 for navigation, or the Polar Vantage M, which has back to start navigation, but those are all slightly more expensive watches. This watch does support multi-sport, so you have lots of different options for different types of workouts and how you set up those customized workout screens, but it doesn't have mountain-based sports activities, so skiing, trail running, and so on, but that's probably not a huge issue for a lot of people. It's also pretty good value in terms of the data that you can get from the watch and the algorithms that it uses. So you get various advanced running metrics like left, right, balance, and running power. You get VO2 max, training effect, training load, then also your recovery time or suggested recovery, which is really useful to know. It also has the option to do structured workouts and strength training in addition to, I guess, what you might perceive as the regular functions of a GPS watch in terms of run, swim, cycle, and so on. So if you're looking for something around this price point, under $200 or 180 pounds, you're looking for something lightweight with long battery life that packs relatively good value into a pretty small package, then this is definitely worth considering. Do bear in mind though that I had a little bit of usability issue with the scroll wheel, so that might be worth thinking about, particularly depending on the shape and size of your wrist, it'd be worth trying it out first. 
that's my verdict on the Coros Pace 2. What did you think? And does this persuade you that this might be something you'd be interested in? Are you in the market for a GPS running watch right now? What do you consider as the most important factor when you're looking at them? Let us know in the comments below. And please subscribe to support us in what we're trying to do at the Running Channel, and I'll see you next time.